So I was trying to decide what game to play next and I just couldn't make up my mind. I was thinking of my backlog and all the games that I've never played over the years and I just couldn't make a decision. Then I said, you know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm finally gonna play the original Half-Life. I'll be honest, I didn't go into this game totally blind. I have actually played Half-Life 2. I played that through and through in the Orange Box Collection on 360 many years ago. And needless to say, I freaking love that game. It's one of my all-time favorites. But I have always felt that it was kind of a disservice for me to have never experienced the original. And that it would be nice for me to have the context as to everything that was going on in the universe. I guess the only real decision I had was do I experience this game for the first time through the Black Mesa remake that was made in 2015, or hop in the time capsule and go back in time. Ultimately I said F that and went back to 1998. So here's my thoughts on the game that helped launch Steam, Portal, everything else Half-Life, Team Fortress, Left 4 Dead, and Counter-Strike. It turned some guy named Gabe Newell into a lord, and is the genesis of people asking for a third game since 2004. HEV suit, check. Crowbar, oh yeah, check. And mustache and goatee combo, definitely check. Join me on this tram ride, and let's get right into it. In Half-Life, you play Gordon Freeman, a physicist who works as a research associate at the Black Mesa Research Facility located in New Mexico. At the beginning, Freeman's ride in a tram on his way into work is one of the more iconic scenes from the entire game. They give you full control of his viewpoint and allow you to walk around and view the entire facility operating at normal functionality. Maybe the most impressive aspect of this whole scene is you get to see a pretty wide array of different environments that the Black Mesa facility houses. I mean, Valve isn't necessarily blowing their proverbial load here, but they're definitely showing you a little bit of nip. <laughs> Gordon Freeman is then asked to carry out an experiment, but in order for him to be able to come into contact with the materials, he needs an HEV suit, Hazardous Environment Vehicle Suit. While walking around and messing up someone's casserole in a microwave, or attempting to peep into a bathroom stall, or picking up a can of soda, you eventually stumble upon the HEV suit, and the game smacks you right in the face with a groovy tune. And yes, there's a little extra funk on that. You then make your way down to the test chamber, where you're briefed and told that you're needed to take a pure sample of some material and push it into an anti-mass spectrometer. And of course, as you would expect, things go horribly, horribly wrong. A cascade resonance occurs, opening up a portal to another dimension called the Zen, allowing for creatures from that dimension to enter into our world and wreak havoc. You come to after an undetermined amount of time, and you're immediately greeted with destruction all around, and mangled bodies littering the hallways. This third chapter, dubbed Unforeseen Consequences, does a really good job of setting the mood for the rest of the game, and very early on introduces a handful of enemy types that would eventually be staples for the Half-Life franchise. The super cool Half-Life Headcrab is seen for the first time here, along with many of its zombie evolved form counterparts. Early encounters with these enemies, armed with only a pistol and the crowbar, feel quite tense and are a great introduction to the game's combat. You've also got the Vortigaunts, which have one of my favorite enemy character designs in the game. 
these special beam cannon having mofos like to hit you with their green lasers and take you out. Mucho rapido. Don't let them hit you. Getting back to the plot of Half-Life. While attempting to escape the Black Mesa research facility, Gordon Freeman makes his way up to attempt to reach the surface. And at one point is met with resistance from a military force who was supposed to help protect the facility but very clearly is attempting to cover up something. The rest of the plot for Half-Life is really pretty simple. Gordon Freeman just needs to make his way to the other side of the facility, to the Lambda complex, where he's heard there might be surviving scientists who have found a way to close the portal to Zen. Now I know I did just say the plot for the rest of the game is pretty simple, and it is, but your trek over to the other side of the facility is super entertaining and really quite a fun ride. During this part, I'd like to take six aspects of the game, three I liked and three I didn't like, and kind of expound upon them and tell you why I either liked them or didn't like them, or felt like they worked or didn't work within the game. So what do you guys think? Should I start with the positives or the negatives? Oh, alright, I guess I kind of have to start with the positives. First off, overall for me the gameplay is really solid. Just about each weapon hits pretty heavy and honestly has a scenario where it's more useful or less useful than the others. Whether needing to take out a group of Vortigaunts, all teleporting in all at once with the Gauss gun and do it quick, or using your crossbow while scaling cliffs, attempting to take soldiers out at a distance, or simply just running around as a madman with your crowbar, wanting to just wail upon your enemies with no concern for yourself. Early on, Valve really proved that they really know weapons and they know how to make them feel great. And of course, they would continue that on with their countless other games that do the same. And another aspect of the game that really adds to the gameplay elements are many of the numerous puzzles in each of the levels. Something that Valve would take with them through the rest of their games as well. Looking at you, Portal 1 and 2. My personal favorite puzzle section is in chapter 8 called On a Rail. Literally called that because in this chapter you commandeer a rail car and have to kind of traverse your way through an underground rail system, changing the direction of the railway by shooting targets while you're on the move. And of course you're being pelted and assaulted by many Zen creatures and the marines from the corporate military force. The second major positive from this game for me is the environments. They're really super diverse and quite imaginative. I mean, you have anything from scientific facilities to underground sewer systems. You got offices, military barracks. Shoot, you've even got the New Mexico desert in there. There was an environment that to me was my favorite but I'll get to that one at a later time. The third and last positive for the game for me is something that I think at this point you've kind of already noticed, but the soundtrack for this game is incredible. I mean, you've got some bangers in there. The HEV suit theme that you hear once you get the suit is pretty awesome. The closing theme song that you hear at the end of the game is great and such an awesome way to roll credits. Then you got the original Half-Life soundtrack that you hear, that of course delivered the iconic Valve sound. And another one is Diabolical Adrenaline, which is a great mix of metal and techno, and really gets that Gordon Freeman blood pumping. Yeah, this song could make anything cooler. Alright, now on to what everyone wants, the three negatives I took away from Half-Life. The first negative for me is not a big one, so I won't take too long on it. 
the loading screens. Now, they don't hang around forever, but they do hit quite often. And when they do, it's generally in the middle of when you're walking around or searching for stuff. Once again, I'll say they don't overstay their welcome, but they're a very minor nuisance. They don't affect the gameplay at all, so I guess if you really wanted to, you could call it more of a nitpick rather than negative, but I don't know, I kind of added it in here just to do it. Okay, so negative number two for me would be just overall some of the length of some of the missions. Some of them personally for me feel like they run on entirely too long. I'd say this game took me somewhere around 13 hours to complete. Additionally, I feel like if they would have condensed or shaved off a couple parts, they probably could have gotten this game down to somewhere around 8, 9, maybe 10 hours. Once again, this issue for me is not an absolute deal breaker. Nowadays, the mean length of a lot of modern video game campaigns is probably around 8 to 12 hours anyway, so... I'm sure there's some people out there that probably finished this game in like 5 hours on hard mode, but that most definitely is not me, so forgive me. Alright, here it is. The moment everyone's been waiting for. Negative number 3 in Half-Life for me. Now I won't say all, but absolutely a lot of these platforming sections in this game just made me want to rip my hair out. Now I know already what a lot of people would say, and I absolutely agree with them 100%. I don't come from a PC gaming background. I'm more of a controller person and less mouse and keyboard. So yes, I suck at PC gaming. <laughs> I think I'm going to give the game the benefit of the doubt and say it's more me and less the game itself. I think what Valve was going for was a very physics oriented, realistically weighted Gordon Freeman in terms of his movement and jumping. Or maybe I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know. This feels like sometimes when you're in movement or making a jump, Freeman's weight or maybe something else likes to kind of pull him a little bit forward. So I'm on some of these platforming sections that require some pretty precise jumping and leaping and one landing for me instinctually because I know he's going to gradually move forward when I land or take my hand off of the forward key. I almost always find myself pressing the back key upon landing and I can't tell you how many times I've either landed and accidentally went over something or have taken myself off of something for compensating. Ugh, just the worst. Once again, for negative number three though, I'm going to chalk this up to a me problem and not a half-life problem. For anyone out there who's having a similar issue with it, keep pushing through, the game's that good. Don't let it scare you off and get good like I'm sure most of the PC hardcore would probably tell you. Overall, for my three negatives for Half-Life, I would definitely say the first two are really more nitpicky. I mean, I kind of had to try and find something that more or less kind of upset me a bit. I would say the third negative is really the only thing that I kind of had a problem with. That's really quite impressive. It really points to the quality of this game and is very commendable for a game of this age. Well, here we are, nearing Half-Life's conclusion. For anyone out there who really, really cares, we're about to get into spoilers for a 22-year-old game. Right now, spoilers for Half-Life, big red letters, all across the screen, and go. Okay, before I get to the very end, I did want to bring up Chapter 11, Questionable Ethics. It's pretty significant because in this portion of the game, Freeman makes it to a secret part of the facility and finds many different species of these end creatures being housed, showing that the company he was working for knew all about Dimension Zen and its inhabitants. Oh man, so why did they have Freeman and the other scientists going forth with their experiments when somebody within the facility already had access to the dimension and the creatures? Hmm, I wonder what's going on. Okay, so later on in the game, Gordon finally makes it to the Lambda Complex and finds what's remaining of the facility's scientists. They inform you that something on the other side of a portal to Zen is keeping the portal open and you're gonna have to go in and wreck shop. 
One giant teleportation device with extra cheese and a large coke. Thanks, Farmer Brown. And here we are, the Zen Dimension. This, of course, is the environment that back to my positives I mentioned that is my favorite in the game. It's just kind of weird and freaky looking. The shapes of things are kind of all over the place and I don't know, I just kind of dig the color palette. At the very end, after making your way all the way through Zen, you reach a final portal that looks really cool and quite ominous. Entering it brings you face to face with the creature that's been keeping the portal open the entire time, a giant fetus looking being known as the Nihilanth. Seeing this creature for the first time, I was kind of bummed at his character design, but now I kind of like it. I mean, the contradiction of you expecting this big giant creature and they throw something that's kind of infantile at you at the end. I don't know. I kind of, something about it I kind of liked. Now this battle didn't take me too long to figure out. You could definitely tell the shards on the wall he was using to recharge after you were doing damage to him, so those needed to go. Only thing that took me a while and frustrated the hell out of me was I was hating getting teleported by him with his stupid green looking spirit bomb thing. And oh my gosh, he teleports you to a freaking platforming area. Oh. After a while I got so mad I just created a save point and Every time he teleported me, I just loaded up my save point. Was, I wasn't dealing with that. I did find out it was pretty easy to cheese. I just found a local pylon and kind of hung behind it, and he couldn't really damage you while you can see him and damage him. And after some shooting and some rockets, he eventually goes down. That incredible feeling, though, of beating the Nihilanth and defeating the game's boss ultimately feels nullified, though, because through your entire trek throughout Zen, you can hear the Nihilanth speaking to you, but it constantly sounds like he's warning you about something, and almost whimpering. Upon the Nihilanth's demise, you are then teleported once again, and come face to face with a strange gentleman in a fancy suit. If you didn't notice throughout the game, you can see this gentleman all throughout the facility, at many different points throughout many of the levels. This telling you two things. One, this gentleman has the ability to teleport himself. And two, at the very beginning of the game you can see him speaking to some of the Black Mesa faculty. Also telling you that he is in some way related to the company. He then thanks you for everything that you've done and reveals that he works for a government. You've given him and his employers full control of the Zen dimension. At this point in the Half-Life lore, I think everyone knows this man as the G-Man, which is short for Government Man, just for anybody out there who doesn't know who he is. He then, oddly enough, offers you a job and says that if you don't accept that, you're essentially a dead man. You of course have no choice but to accept the job and enter a portal for the last time and seem to be put in some form of stasis, awaiting assignment for your next job thus ending Half-Life's campaign. At the end of the day, part of me is disappointed that it took me so long to play this game. But I am incredibly happy that I did play it, and now very much look forward to my next playthrough of Half-Life 2. Now for me, I see why so many people hold this game in such high esteem. The level design and gameplay overall is exquisite, and as for me, you can throw that one descriptive word that I always love for games, it has incredible style. So I would absolutely recommend to anyone out there who's curious, you should definitely give this game a try. And if you're worried about playing a game of this age, I would also say go play the Black Mesa remake that came out in 2015 on Steam. I've heard nothing but great things for that remake, and, and it has very good reviews, so yeah, give that one a try. Once again, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I love putting out these kind of videos, so I'm going to continue to do it. 
And if you guys have any recommendations for future games or movies or anything at all, feel free to comment down below or contact me through any of my other forms of social medias. Anyways, love you guys. Be safe. See you on the next Enter Chasman.